Now, in order for us to figure out if our message.value is actually greater than the minimum USD that we set, we actually have to convert our message.value from its layer one slash Ethereum to the USD equivalent. So how are we actually gonna do that? Well, first we're gonna need to get the price of Ethereum or Phantom or Avalanche or whatever layer one blockchain that we're working with. So let's create a function to get that price, to get that conversion rate. So we'll do function get price. And this is gonna be the function that we use to get the price of Ethereum in terms of USD. So we can convert our message.value to USD. And then we're also gonna do a function called get conversion rate. And these are both gonna be public functions so that we can go ahead and call them and test them and do whatever we want with them. So in order to get the price, we're gonna to have to use one of these chain link data feeds to get the pricing information. And we can look right here at this contract to see what using one of these chain link price feeds looks like. What we're actually doing when we're interacting with this chain link price feed is we're actually reading from one of these contracts. There's a contract out there called the aggregator contract that is a function called latest round data, which returns a whole bunch of data, but namely this int price. And this int price is what we are interested in. Let's look at our get price function and figure out how do we actually call this? Since this is an instance of us interacting with a contract outside of our project, we're gonna need two things. What are those two things? We're gonna need the ABI of the contract and also the address of the contract. So the address of the contract is gonna be easy. We can get the address of the contract from the contract addresses section of the Chainlink data feeds. Let's scroll on down to rink B and we can find the ETH USD address on rink B. And we'll create this contract so that it works on rink B. So we're gonna grab this address, we're gonna copy it, and we're gonna move back to our, to our code here and we're gonna paste the address here. So great, we have the address now. We have the address of the other contract that we don't wanna interact with. Now, how do we get the ABI? Well, what we did before with simple storage was we imported the entire contract into our code here. That's something that we could do, but that's actually a lot of code. So what's something that we could do instead? Remember, if we're looking at Remix and we look at one of the contracts that we compiled before, the ABI is really just kind of this list of the different functions and interactions you can have with a contract. The ABI itself doesn't actually need to include any of the logic. It just needs to include, hey, here are the different functions that you can call. For example, in this contract, we can call fund, we have get conversion rate, we have get price. They're not implemented yet, but they will be eventually. Now there technically is another way to interact with contracts without the ABI, but for now, we're just gonna ignore that. So how can we get the ABI? There's a concept in Solidity called an interface. And let's look at an example of an interface. If we go to github.com slash smart contract kit slash chain link, we can see a number of different contracts in the chain link repository. We can go to contracts, SRC, V0.8, interfaces, and we'll go to aggregator v3 interface.sol. And if we look at the Solidity in here, we can see a whole bunch of function declarations, but none of the logic is actually implemented in this. This is what's known as an interface. If we compile this, we'll actually get the ABI of a contract because it defines all the different ways we can interact with a contract. It doesn't actually say what these functions do, which is fine though, because we don't need to know what the functions actually do. Those are gonna be stored in the contract. So what we can do is we can grab this interface from the code and paste it into our remix. Now, hold on, if you're following along, you don't have to copy paste this with me because I'm gonna show you an easier way in just a second. So for now, feel free to go ahead and just watch. But once we have this interface aggregator V3 interface, we can now use this to make API calls. So now we could say aggregator v3 interface at this address and the combination of these two give us that aggregator v3 contract with whatever code is here. If at this contract address, this aggregator v3 interface is valid, we could do something like dot version. Let's look at this interface. Is there a version function? There sure is. So that means we could call a version function on this contract. So let's actually go ahead and copy this into a different section. I'm gonna create a new function called get version just to illustrate this. It's gonna be a public, it's gonna be a view, and it's gonna return the uint256. 
and we're going to split it up into two steps here. But we're going to say aggregator v3 interface price feed. So we're creating a variable of type aggregator v3 interface equals aggregator v3 interface at this address. And then we're going to return price feed dot version. Now I'm going to go ahead and deploy this contract to Rinkby just to show you what this get version is going to return. But you don't have to follow along here if you don't want, because again, we're working with the test net. You can just watch if you like. For this section, we are going to test a little bit more sparse since we're going to be mainly using the test net since we're going to be working with an actual Chainlink Oracle network. Once we move over to Hardhat and with JavaScript, all this testing locally will be a lot easier and a lot faster. You're more than welcome to go ahead and fiddle and try and test a lot of the stuff as we go along. But just note that it might take a little bit longer to do some of the testing on a test net. Let's delete that last funding contract. We're going to deploy this one. We're going to scroll up. We're going to switch to Injected Web3. We're going to switch from Coven to RinkB. And the reason we want to make sure we're on RinkB is because this address is specific to RinkB. The contract that we're looking to interact with might not be at this address on every single chain. We want to make sure we're on the RinkB chain for this because if some other contract is there on a different chain, this version function obviously won't exist and this function could error. So let's go ahead. We'll go to fund me. We're going to deploy this to the RinkB chain. Again, you don't have to follow along with me here. You can just watch. And once that contract has been deployed, we now have a view function called get version, and we can see it's returning the variable four, showing us that this is the fourth version of a price feed. So this is a really easy way for us to interact with contracts that exist outside of our project. We use one of these interfaces, which can get compiled down to the ABI, and then we combine that ABI with the address to call a function. As we work with these interfaces more and more, they'll start to make more and more sense. So if it's a little confusing to you right now, don't get discouraged. The more you work with it, the easier it'll become.